kind of want to dive into uh, kind of the, the childhood and, and kind of what it was like uh, going through that school, the school system, especially the, the mainstream school yeah. system, uh, being deaf and um, kind of what obstacles you faced during that time and uh, how you were able to overcome, like were there other deaf kids even uh, in yeah. school at that time? Um, when I mainstreamed this public school, I was actually the only deaf kid in public school. Oh. So the hardest part was, you know, just socializing with other peers, hearing peers. You know, and they have a, I have a disadvantage because I can't hear as well with the hearing peers. So when they're trying to communicate with me, I'm just like lost. Yeah. So I'm very, I'm very heavily reliant on interpreters in classes. So I use interpret a lot in my classes when teachers talking or even when my peers are talking around. So. It, it was tough when I first, you know, mainstream in public school, but I, I kind of picked it up. It was the funny thing in, in elementary, when I mainstream in elementary, all my peers very, very friendly, very curious, like who I am, how I became deaf, all that stuff. But as I got older into middle school and high school, the atmosphere changed, you know, it became more peer pressure thing. And then you feel kind of like I, I became like an outsider pretty much. So I was a very, a quiet kid and I would more like hang out with like the nerds because you know they're a very small group so I kind of hang out with them play chess club all that stuff mm -hmm. and I'm very thankful that you know when I got to swimming I had a swimming peers you know swimming friends I can hang out with them so it just kind of helped you know self you know boost my self-esteem yeah it's really it's interesting that you say once you got to middle school kind of the tone shifted and I've noticed that in other situations too like um, elementary school kids like you said are very curious and are very friendly and yeah. and for some reason the whole the whole tone shifts I think for everyone you know once you I get, know once it's you like get. when I first went to middle school and also it's like I'm like where where do I belong to you know like everybody has their own little groove and like try to check out man it just kind of like I just felt like like pushed back you know it was it was kind of tough you know but after a while I got the hang of it and I was able to find some friends and then at that time middle school that's when another deaf kid came in so I kind of hang out with that deaf kid so mm -hmm. we kind of became good friends you know we hang out a lot together yeah so did you have to have an interpreter with you all the time when you would even be like did you have an interpreter with you everywhere that you went in school uh, even when you were with friends? Um, well, in classes, I had interpreters, but from class to class, when I went to a different classroom, usually interpreter goes to the other classroom. They don't like follow me everywhere I go. So they just kind of, you know, go to the next classroom and just wait for me to show up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so how were you able to, to make friends and socialize and talk to your peers? Um, it was tough. I mean, I didn't, I didn't have I didn't have a whole lot of friends. It's just more like I just kind of hang out with them because you know we kind of know each other. So I kind of hang out more with my swimming friends. And then when we went to the pool where we trained, I felt really comfortable because that's where we you know we kind of know each other and then we know our training style. And then we just I feel more relaxed. But when it came to school, I felt like just kind of like very tensed up and just kind of felt like. I didn't belong there, you know? So swimming was my place, my happy place. That's where I belong. That's yeah. what motivated me to keep swimming harder and just keep better, getting better and better. And it just kind of proved myself that you know, I'm capable. 